Well, hello, I'm Mike, and welcome to the 10-Minute Bible Study. Today we're going to continue in Mark chapter 4. So if you have a Bible, go ahead and open to Mark chapter 4, verse 35, and let's dive in. First, let's set the context. Jesus has just finished telling his disciples the little parables. We looked at that in the last episode. You can go back and watch it if you'd like to. And in those little parables, Jesus began revealing more and more of himself to the disciples. Now, in today's episode, he's going to reveal a lot more of his identity to his disciples as he gets on a boat and begins traveling to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Now, as we know, his disciples, at least a few of them are fishermen, so they'd be very comfortable on a boat, especially a boat like this. But probably they're used to staying closer to shore. That's where the better fishing is going to be particularly if you're fishing with a net. Now, the Sea of Galilee, it's not unusual for storms to come upon the sea quickly and for those storms to sometimes be violent. So a sudden storm like this, it wouldn't be unusual. Now, word about the boat. This would have been a small boat. The text tells us that they took several boats with them to the other side, and there would have only been one place for someone to sleep. That would have been on the stern, the front of the boat, where oftentimes there would be a raised seat, sometimes with cushions. And that's where Jesus has settled in. He's exhausted from teaching, from giving everything that he has to the crowds, and so he gets on a boat and promptly falls asleep. Let's look at the text together. Mark writes, On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat just as he was, and other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Now, we've already spoken about the Sea of Galilee. We've already spoken about the boat. We've already noticed how Jesus is up in a stern in the front of the boat sleeping. And now we come to how the disciples respond to the storm. The storm has them in a panic. Fishermen, they would have been comfortable in a boat, but they are really frightened by this particular storm. And so they run to Jesus and they wake him up. Now, it's clear that they want something from Jesus, even if it's just they want him there while they go down. Now, it's, it's worth noting that they call him teacher here. To the disciples, Jesus is still a teacher, not yet Lord. That has not yet been revealed to them, although it will be soon. Mark continues, And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Okay, let's look at that real quick. The word rebuke here in the Greek is epitomeo, and it means to admonish or forbid. So Jesus is exercising, demonstrating his authority. He doesn't just have authority to teach. He doesn't just have authority to heal. He doesn't just have authority even to cast out demons. Jesus has authority actually over the wind and the waves. This is a new revelation in the book of Mark. Jesus has authority over the very forces of nature. So he rebukes the wind and the waves and he says, peace. Now this word peace here, when translated, is really just hush. It's be quiet. It's not peace like shalom. It's not a theological peace. It's just a stop. <laughs> be quiet. That, that's enough. That's what Jesus is doing. Now, I may be reading a little bit too much into this, but, but when I hear peace, be still, it reminds me of Psalm 46, which actually we've done an episode on. I'll post that in the description down below. And, and in the end of that psalm, it says, be still and know that I am God. That to me is what this has echoes of. Now, Psalm 46, it's a psalm about the storms of life, about being overwhelmed and uh, feeling like the world is caving in. And in the end, there's this recognition, there's this admonishment to be still and know that God is God. And here Jesus says, be still in the midst of a storm, the waves of life. And I can't help but wonder if perhaps the subtext for Mark is, be still and know that I am God. The finishing, the, the end there, the completion of that verse in Psalm 46. Now, as I said before, this episode here is a demonstration of Jesus' authority, his authority over nature. And that's authority that belongs to God and God alone, just like the authority to forgive, which we saw a couple episodes ago. And Jesus continues and says, He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? Now, Sally Lloyd-Jones is an author who wrote the wonderful children's Bible, the Jesus Storybook Bible, and this episode, The Calming of the Storm, is one of my very favorite treatments of the Bible in the Jesus Storybook Bible. And Sally Lloyd-Jones says two things. She, she notes first that the wind and the waves recognize Jesus' voice, and she ties that back to Genesis 1 and 2, where God speaks the world into existence. And now we know from John chapter 1 that Jesus 
is the Word, and in the beginning He spoke the world into existence. And so the wind and the waves, which were spoken into existence by Jesus again here, recognize His voice and obey. Sally Lloyd-Jones also makes the really insightful comment regarding verse 41, where the disciples are afraid. And Jesus says to them, why are you still afraid? She notes that they believed their fears instead of Jesus. And this just strikes me as so true. So often we believe our fears, we trust them instead of trusting in Jesus. And this is what they do. Mark writes in verse 41, the disciples, they're terrified by this demonstration of power and authority, and they should be. I, I can only imagine how overwhelming it must have been for them. And yet here, instead of asking Jesus about it, they turn to one another and they say, who is this? We've already seen in Mark that Jesus wants us to bring our questions and our doubts and our fears to him. Now, don't get me wrong, it's good to bring those doubts and fears to your friends, but we shouldn't just bring them to our, to our friends. We shouldn't just bring them to our friends. We need to bring them to Jesus also. Friends, let's be the sort of people who bring our doubts and our fears to Jesus.